Stayallday.com. Tune into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What's that, Dre? That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us, including yourself, to go and make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. And then we put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, and techniques all underneath the umbrella of one unified philosophy that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic is how to be super disciplined. Before we get into this, I'm going to remind everybody, I send out a text message every day guaranteed to have you focus sharp and on point. I call it daily motivation. I'm not even going to ask you. I'm just going to tell you that you want to receive this message. All you got to do to get it is text me right now to get into my text community completely for free. My number is 305-384-6894. And once you're in there, we will tell you what your options are for how frequent you want to be getting the motivational messages straight to your phone, straight from me. Secondly, work on your game university.com. That is the place where I do all of my coaching is actually the only place that I do any coaching. If you want to work with me directly, that is the only way that it will happen. Go to work on your game university.com and you will see your options there. We give you options everywhere here, folks. So we don't want to we don't want to limit you and make you feel like you don't have a choice. We're going to give you several options for getting the game that you want to get uh, from me, from us here at work on your game. Why? Because this is just what we do. So work on your game university.com. My text number, both of those down below in the description. All that out the way, let's get into today's topic, which is how to be super disciplined. Now, everybody knows you've been listening to this show for even three days. You already know discipline is one of the main pillars of what we do here at Work On Your Game. Is the first thing I mentioned when I introduced this show, the discipline of showing up every single day and doing the work. And when people ask me, whenever I do interviews, people ask me, Jerry, you talk about mindset a lot. What is the, what would you say is the number one trait of all the things mindset wise that you discuss? Now I've talked about a thousand different things based on mindset. What's the number one trait that you would suggest to a person if they're going to be uh, successful at what they do, regardless of what it is? The answer is this discipline, showing up consistently and doing your job, doing your job, even when you don't feel like doing your job. The professionalism of performing on a consistent basis such that people can come to not only know that you can do a good job, but they come to expect that you'll do a good job, even to the point that they depend on you doing a good job, which usually means they are willing to pay for you doing the job that you do. Right? People will pay for things when they come to expect it and when they depend on it and you're delivering at a high level. But you must be disciplined in order to do that. So today we're going to talk about how to be super disciplined. I hear from people tell me who tell me every day that they want to be, I hear from people every day who tell me that they want to be more disciplined or that they need to be more disciplined, or maybe they'll say more consistent or something that rhymes with one of those words. When I say rhymes with means something that sounds something like that. Consistency, discipline, uh, follow through, uh, doing my stuff the way I'm supposed to, um, living up to my potential, fulfilling my promise, uh, making sure I'm executing every day, something like that. Those are, when I say rhymes with, that's what I mean. So today I'm going to lay out exactly what you need to do to step up your discipline. Does that, does that sound like something that you'd be interested in? Any of you want to be a super disciplined individual, want to learn how it's done? Good, because today I'm going to tell you how to do it. So take out something to take notes with and make sure you take notes on what I'm going to share here today. Because if you can get this to, if you can get this to get activated, you can get this activated in your life. It can make a huge difference on your performance and your outputs, which leads to a huge difference in the rewards that you receive. Point number one, topic once again, <coughs> excuse me, is how to be super disciplined. Number one, decide what outcomes you want for which you are willing to endure the pain of discipline. First thing you got to do is decide. What outcomes you want for which you are willing to endure the pain of discipline? The word decide is about cutting off and killing off anything other than what you have chosen. That's what the word decide is about. So in the dictionary it says decide means to come to a resolution in the mind as a result of consideration. Also calls to come to a resolution also Make a choice from a number of alternatives. That's what the word decide is. And there are several others. 
but it comes from the Latin words di, which is a prefix that means off, and the word caider is a Latin word which means to cut. So when you so decide is about to cut off. That's what decide means. Literally, that's the origin of the word to cut off any other possibilities. When you make a decision about doing something, now you don't have to worry anymore about whether or not it's going to happen. I'm leaving a pause there because I want to make sure that point sunk in. So let me say it again because I want to make sure you heard it. When you make a decision about something, you don't have to worry anymore about whether or not it's going to happen because the word decide literally its actual origin means to cut off. That's what it means. So when you decide on something, you have cut off every other possibility of any, anything else happening. So as soon as you decide, you should rest easy. You should sleep like a baby that night because ain't nothing to worry about, nothing to be anxious about. Why? Because you already decided that it's happened. You cut off every other option. You left yourself only one option. Therefore, there's only one thing that can happen. Everybody follow me. If you didn't get it, rewind this and listen to it again. See, in my book, The Third Day, which you should go grab for your free copy of at thirddaybook.com if you don't yet have your copy. I explain this as the discipline anchor. I call it discipline one of your anchors. The anchor is the outcome that you desire strongly enough that you are willing to endure the discipline in order to go get it. What do you want strongly enough that you are willing to cut off every other option and you're willing to endure the discipline that comes with having only one option? See, discipline is a great thing. And because this is the reason why so many people want it. And it's the reason why when I talk about discipline, there's always an audience of people who are willing to listen because discipline is something that everyone understands the value of it. But discipline is not always fun. There's one, there's one thing to understand the value of something and another thing to, for it to be fun and enjoyable. Are there things like uh, paying your taxes is probably something you should do because if you don't, the government will probably come after you in some way. But it's not always fun to pay your taxes because money has to leave your account or money never gets into your account in the first place because the government is just taking it straight from you. But it's probably something that you should do at the same time. So discipline is not always fun, nor is it always easy. There will be times where there is a discipline you are supposed to execute on, but you will not feel like executing on. Has any of you ever had one of those moments or one of those days? There's something you're supposed to do. You know you're supposed to do it. It's right there on the list to be done, but you don't feel like doing it. You will not feel like it before you do it. You will not feel like it after you did it. And you will not feel like it while you're in the process of doing it. Yet, you need to do it anyway. See, this is where the value of the anchor comes in. Because it moves you to action when your feelings want to keep you in inaction. And your discipline needs to be stronger than your emotions. Your discipline needs to be stronger than your emotions. Motivation is usually triggered by some form of emotion. The challenge with motivation is that it's not always there, it's not always available, and it's not reliable. Discipline is much more reliable than motivation. And your discipline needs to be stronger than you lacking motivation. So you're used to being motivated to go do your work, but today you're not motivated. That does not mean you're, it's okay for you to not do your work. Your discipline needs to be stronger than that lack of emotion that you have there. You don't have to have any emotion. You don't have to feel good to go do your job. You don't have to feel like it to turn on a microphone and start recording your podcast that you have supposed to be launching for the last three years. You don't have to feel good to sit down and write that book that you've been talking about for the last 18 months. You don't have to feel good to go to the gym and work out but you, because you want to be in great shape or you're a pro athlete or you're trying to lose 25 pounds before your wedding. You don't have to feel good to go do what you're supposed to do. You just need to know that that's what you're supposed to do and you need to go do your job. That's discipline. In my book, The Third Day, again, is all about how you do this. So if you don't have your copy of that book, go to thirddaybook.com. Link's down below in the description. What the discipline does and the anchor does, the anchor of your discipline, it moves you to actions when your feelings don't want to do anything. It's about you getting clear on your goals and your reasons why those goals matter. You need clear goals and you need reasons for those goals. Both will help in conjunction with each other. And there is a logical outcome and an emotional tie-in that makes it work. All right, so the anchor itself becomes the logical outcome. That's, you know, why do you want this outcome? Why do you want this result? You need to know what that is. And an emotional tie-in, the reasons. What do you want and why do you want it? I did a whole episode on this show about what and why 
over how. When you know what you want and you know why you want it, then you don't need to know how you're going to do it. Let's talk about this in episode number 2043. What and why over how. What you want is the outcome. That's point C. Why you want it is what's going to get you moving. That's point A. And how is the bridge between the two? That's point B. So you see, when you understand where you're at, point A, why you want something, and what you want, point C, that's the goal, then the bridge will build itself. Challenge for many of you is that you get so caught up in the fact that you don't have a bridge or you don't know how to build a bridge. You're, all, you're so focused on the how. What do I do? How do I do it? I don't know how. I need a strategy. I need a plan. Somebody can tell me what to do. Many of you get so caught up on that, you never even think about. You don't spend nearly enough time focusing on the goal, envisioning yourself with the outcome, nor do you focus on why you actually want it, which is the actual the fuel in the tank. That's the starting point. Be, do, have. And if you didn't catch that, it was embedded in that three-part point that I just gave you. Why you want something is the being. How you're going to get it is the doing. And the actual outcome you're going to produce is the having. Be, do, have. That's why you need an anchor. Point number two. Today's topic, once again, is how to be super disciplined. Number two, set up structures that are conducive to your decided upon disciplines. This is a good one. And despite its simplicity, is this is often overlooked or underlooked. Some people just never, this has never even, is never flashed through their mind and never considered this. But that's the reason why I exist in the marketplace, to show you some things you hadn't thought about. Remember that structure produces discipline. Structure produces discipline. If you want to be more disciplined, you need structures in place to make the discipline happen as a byproduct, not going and forcing yourself to be disciplined. If you're trying to force yourself to be disciplined, that's the reason why it's not working. If I want to be more disciplined at, for example, going to the gym. Let's say I want to get more disciplined at that. I should first decide on a workout location that is as frictionless as possible so I can get to the gym and actually use it. In other words, is there a gym that is close by? Can I walk to it? Do I need to drive? Can I ride my bike? Is it in the house? Is it in my garage? Am I going to work out in the living room? I need to reduce the friction when it comes to actually getting to the gym. This is part of my structure. Because the more friction there is to get into the gym, the less chances I'm going to actually go. You understand? If it takes me 45 minutes to get to the gym and I got to drive across town, I'm always getting stuck in traffic and it's hard to find parking once I get there, there's a good chance I'm not going to stick to going to the gym. Not because I don't like the gym, but because the process has so much friction in it. There's so many failure points in that process that I end up just letting it fail. And this is what happens with a lot of you. You don't have the right structure in place. Therefore, you're not doing the thing. And it's not that you don't want to do the thing. It's just that the process has too much friction in it. So we got to fix the process. See, it's not your thing or even your desire to do it. The process is getting in your way. It's creating so much friction that by the time you get through all the friction, you don't have any energy left to do what you're supposed to be doing. But on the other hand, if the place I'm going to work out is my living room and I can work out by opening up my iPad and looking at a YouTube video, well, what's the chances that I get to that workout if I really want to work out? There's probably a 100% chance because I don't, I don't have to travel anywhere. Now, me getting in a car job 45 minutes, stuck in traffic, got to search for parking. Could I still go work out? Yes. Yeah, so a person is highly, they highly desire to work out, maybe even highly motivated to work out. They might still work out despite all that. But the person who's kind of on the fence, all right, what side of the fence you think they're going to fall on if there's all that friction in the process? Everybody understand this? And understand that there may be several of these friction points in your process that is the reason why you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. So if the gym is at my building or in my living room or my personal trainer is going to come to my house and put me through a workout, there's a much higher chance that I'll actually show up to my workout. Why? Because there's no friction. I'm making it as easy as possible. Listen to my episode where I talked about how to make discipline easy. If you didn't hear that episode, that was episode number. Let me see if I can find it. 1643. How to make discipline easy. One way to make discipline easy is to put the right structure in place. All right, so if you are failing at discipline, what we need to look at is your structure or your lack of structure. Now, I'm not saying that it necessarily has to be easy to be disciplined, but you do need to set up structures and systems that make your execution of your discipline as frictionless as possible. And the less friction there is involved in the process, the higher the chance that you're going to do what you're supposed to do 
and the higher likelihood that you will do more of it. If you want to do something in volume, you will need you need to reduce the friction. Simple as that. If, for example, I do a lot of recording, like for example, this show. The show has um, nearly three thousand episodes. I do a, a ton of recording for this show on a weekly basis. Some reasons that I'm able to record as much as I do, or some reasons that I do record as much as I do, is yes, I have the desire. Yes, I have the uh, I have the what's the word? Let's say the anchor in me that I want to get my message out there to as many people as possible. I have those things, but you want to know some other things that make this easy? I never put the microphone away. In other words, the microphone I'm recording on, if you're watching this on video, see this microphone here sitting in front of me? This microphone sits on my desk 24 hours a day. I never put the microphone away on a shelf anywhere. Now, is that some magic trick that allows me to record more? It's not a magic trick, but it is a small thing that I do that makes a big difference. Since I never put the microphone away, because I know I'm going to use it every day, it's always available. So as soon as I want to record something, all I got to do is push the button and boom, I'm recording. Also, the topics of this show. Topics that I talk about here, I flesh the topics out long before I actually record on the subject. So this subject right here, this topic that we're talking about here today, I had this topic fleshed out like three weeks ago before I recorded. It. And the time you're listening to it, this topic is has been in existence in my mind for months by the time you finally hear it. Also, as I said, I flesh out the topics before I start recording. If I know I have two hours to record tomorrow. I don't have to think about what am I going to say because I got two hours to record. I got to fill two hours. Well, I already got the material laid out. It's just a matter of me going to my document and I just start recording the first one. Then I do the next one. Then I do the next one. I already have the notes ready. If I get an idea to record a video, for example, without getting up from my seat, I can set everything up without moving from the seat that I'm in right now. I have a camera set up. I have a microphone. I got lighting. All of that is ready. And for the next 15 seconds, I can start recording if I wasn't recording already. This is all part of the structure that makes the execution much easier. I understand that discipline does not mean you fighting through a bunch of difficulties in order to get something done. That's not what discipline is. That's, a, some, that's something, but that's not what discipline is. You make discipline easy by setting things up in your favor. Now, if I had to do a whole bunch of other stuff every time I wanted to record, let's say I had to go into a different space, I had to go grab my camera from somewhere, I had to go get a cord from somewhere, I had to do a 10 minute setup process. Would I still record as much as I do? Probably. I probably would. But I would also start looking for probably pretty quickly a way to reduce the friction in that process because that process has so much friction it's going to slow me down. So you want to make discipline easy by setting up your structure and your systems that make it easy. Again, this is all part of the structure that makes execution seamless. Now understand, again, discipline doesn't mean fighting through a bunch of difficulties in order to get something done. You set it up by making things work in your favor. So then when you do produce on a consistent basis, it looks like you're some kind of superhero, but all you're really doing is following a process, which is what many people do not do. So I guess in comparison, you are a superhero. Point number three, today's topic once again is how to be super disciplined. Number three, arrange environmental logistics that support your decision. What does that mean? Environmental logistics that support your decision. Now I just gave you some examples of this in point number two. Like my microphone is always present. My cameras are always at the ready. I have a tripod here in front of me. This tripod doesn't leave my desk. My microphone, even when I'm not recording, doesn't leave or right next to my computer. It stays in the same spot at all times. And this is a part of the environmental logistics. Anything I need to access, do what I do for my business, I can reach it without getting it from the seat that I'm sitting in in this exact moment. If I need to grab uh, some highlighters, I got them in that shelf over there. Any of my books, they're right here behind me. My phones are right here in front of me. I got charges right here for everything. My printer's right over there. So if I'm printing out shipping labels, my bigger printer, if I'm printing out a piece of paper, I can reach all of that stuff without getting it from the seat. All of it. That's logistics. The logistics of my workspace are set up to make it easy for me to do my thing, whatever it is going to be. Look at all the areas of your process and identify where there is friction. Where do things get hard? Where are things difficult? Where do things slow down? Areas in which uh, you're not being nearly as efficient as you need to be, and those are areas that you need to fix. What are the things that you simply don't like doing or are not good at doing? By making adjustments to these areas, whether by changing what you're doing or how you do it, who is responsible for doing it, maybe even eliminating that aspect of the process completely to reduce the friction. Maybe you're just doing extra stuff you don't need to be doing. I remember I was, somebody came to me probably around 2000, what year was this? Maybe 2010. He said, 
and this is um this at this time I'm only publishing bas <coughs> excuse me I'm only publishing basketball videos on YouTube. My audience is all basketball players. He comes to me. He says, "Well, look, Jerry, I got this product that I I'm an affiliate marketer for. If you promote this product, you will get a cut of the commissions every time that you make a sale." And I said, "That sounds like a good idea." So I started doing that, and for several months, I would promote the link that this guy gave me because I didn't know anything about the space of affiliate marketing, and I'm promoting this product and he would hit me up every month and he would send me money for the money that I had made promoting the product on his behalf. But then I took a look at the product and what it was and I said, you know what, I could probably just promote this thing myself. I reached out to the guy who actually created the product, the actual creator. So I cut the middleman out, reached to the guy who actually created the product and I started affiliate marketing the program directly myself rather than going through that middleman guy who had initially come up to me, basically cut him out the process and I kept doing the marketing of the exact same product and I was taking home a lot more of the money because now this guy wasn't getting a cut in the process. The whole point is I cut him out and reduced the friction of the process. I reduced the friction. The process was money going into my pocket. So I reduced that friction by cutting the middleman out and I was able to clear more money in the process. Okay, so sometimes you just have to eliminate some aspects of your process or maybe you just had to change the who, what, why of it. And all of those things can can make the situation more seamless. Another example, I used to record episodes of this very show, the video I used to record with a GoPro camera. The GoPro, I still have it, is right here behind me. I can reach it without getting up from this chair, as a matter of fact. But I stopped recording the video episodes of this show on the GoPro camera because the challenge with the GoPro is that it would start to overheat after recording for a certain amount of time. The GoPro is made for like action shots. You're, surfing you're riding a bike and things like that it was made for doing that kind of those kind of shots not for just sitting in one space and recording a a talking head video like what i'm doing right now now why it overheats like that on a consistent basis i don't really know don't get me to try to explain it to you but it does and what would happen is that after i recorded each episode maybe i'll be able to get in two episodes of the show the camera overheat and i had to let it cool off a little bit put it in the freezer put it in the refrigerator before i could keep recording and it was adding friction to the process of me recording and that can't happen so i got fired from the job and i got replaced with i record now on or one of my old iphones i just use the video camera on one of my old iphones to record episodes of this show so you don't need to be super high tech to uh, produce something that's, that is producing results for people and the, again the gopro overheating was adding friction to the process got rid of it and i never had that problem using my iphone video camera so if you want to be more disciplined, anywhere you notice friction in your work, the first thing you got to do is fix the friction. All right, where is this friction coming from? Why does this friction exist? What do I need to do to change this situation? And that's exactly what you do in that process. All that out the way, let's recap today's class, which is how to be super disciplined. Again, I hear from people every day who tell me they want to be more disciplined and more consistent. Here's how you do it. Number one, decide what outcomes you want for which you are willing to endure the pain of discipline. What are your anchors? Number two, I'm skip number two. Number two, set up structures that are conducive to your decided upon disciplines. Remember that structure produces discipline. So if you want to be more disciplined, the first thing you should do is become more structured. If you want that discipline up, structure in place has to be there so that the discipline is produced as a byproduct. You don't just become super disciplined and then you get structured. No, you become super structured and then you get disciplined. So the easier you make a process, the more likely you are going to follow through on that process. And number three, arrange environmental logistics to support your decision. So as I explained to you, the bunch of things that I need for work, anything I could possibly need that is in this house, I can reach it without getting up from the chair because everything is within arm's reach. That is part of the reduction of friction that makes my uh, work process a lot easier. If you're in business, one of the easiest ways to reduce the friction of the path of money from wherever it's coming from to your pocket is to reduce the middleman. You want to get as many middlemen out of the way as possible. There's a middleman in a way, there's some friction uh, in, in the process of your money getting into your pocket. The friction is costing you money in that process. The GoPro got replaced by the iPhone camera so because it was, it was adding friction by adding time to my process because I had to slow down and wait for it to cool off every time I recorded an episode or two. I didn't want to do that anymore. So I got rid of the thing that caused the friction and now we replace it with something better. All that said, folks, text me so you're getting my daily motivation every day. My number guaranteed, guaranteed to have you focus sharp on point. My number is 305-384-6894 and work on your game university.com. You want to work with me directly? Would you like to be coached by me? Can I help you when it comes to your mindset, your strategy, your systems, and your accountability for moving yourself forward? If so, go to work on your game university.
Dre.com. You can join any one of my masterminds right there on the page. Work on your game. Dre, all.